All right, in this video, we're gonna tackle finding antiderivatives given some initial conditions. The idea of initial conditions is we're gonna be given certain values of the antiderivative functions so that we can replace that arbitrary C with an exact constant. In this first example here, we're being told that the derivative function is 8x cubed plus 12x plus 3. We're also told, and this is the initial condition, that the original function, when we plug in a 1 for x, we're going to get out a 6. We're being asked to find the original function. Well, the first step in this case is to find the antiderivative of f prime of x, because the antiderivative of f prime of x is f of x. So in this case, we'll use the anti-power rule. So f of x would be 8x. Now to the fourth, we add one there and then divide by 4, plus 12x squared divided by 2, plus 3x. This is now being, this being a constant. It always turns into this linear term. And then plus c. We'll clean this up real fast. So we got f of x equals 2x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 3x plus c. And now the only difference between this and previous problems is we're going to replace this c with an actual value. And to do that, we're going to use this information right here. What this means that when I plug in a 1 for my x value, this f of x function needs to output a 6. So all I'm simply going to do is plug in a 1 here, set it equal to 6, and that will set up a simple equation to where I can find c. So here I have plugged in 1 for x, set my function equal to 6. Let's solve this now for c. This becomes just 2 plus 6 plus 3 plus c. Adding these together gives me 6 equals 11 plus c. Subtracting 11 from both sides would give me negative 5 equals c. So obviously my answer to this problem is not c equals negative 5. My answer is this original f of x function, which is simply this function right here, but with a negative 5 plugged in here. So I get that my original function is 2x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 3x minus 5. So in our second example, we're being given the second derivative, being told conditions about the first derivative and the original function, and being told to find f of t. In this case, we're just going to do the same initial conditions type antiderivative, but we're going to do it in two steps. The first step is to go from the second derivative and step back to the first derivative. We're going to replace that c value using this information about the first derivative. Once we have the first derivative, we now just have a normal initial conditions problem where we're going to go from the first derivative to the original function, replacing that c value with this information right here. First things first, I'm going to just rewrite this second derivative a little bit nicer so it's easy to anti-differentiate. This would be 3 times t to the negative 1 half. All right, now I want to find my general form of my first derivative by anti-differentiating this. I'm simply going to use this anti-power rule again. So f prime of t is going to be 3 times t to the 1 half. Can I get 1 half because I added 1 to this exponent right here? but I also have to divide by 1 half plus c. Importantly here, I need to remember that dividing by 1 half is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So to simplify this, I would get 6t to the 1 half plus c. Now to find my c value, I'm going to use this initial condition for the first derivative. I'm going to get out a 7 when I plug in a 4. So here I've plugged in 4 and got my output of 7 as given in this statement right here. Now to simplify this, this is the square root of 4, which is 2. 2 times 6 is 12. So I have 7 equals 12 plus c. Subtracting 12 from both sides would give me that negative 5 equals c. So again, what this statement means is that this value right here is negative 5. So I now know that my first derivative is 6 times t to the 1 half minus 5. All I need to do now is anti-differentiate again and then use this final initial condition to find my original function. So in this case, to find f of t, I'm going to anti-differentiate. The same thing is going to happen here. So this is 6t now to the 3 halves, because I'm adding 1 to that exponent, and dividing by 3 halves 
minus five times t. Again, this is that constant turns into a linear term when anti-differentiating plus my c value. Cleaning things up a little bit, this uh, division of three halves is the same thing as multiplying by two thirds. Six times two thirds ends up being a four. And then again, this is t to the three halves minus five t plus c. Now, employing this initial condition information for f of t, when I plug in a four here, I need to get out a 20. Now all I need to do is simplify this and solve for c. Um, what I'm going to get is 20 equals four to the three halves. By the way, I take the square root to get two, two cubed is eight. So this is eight times four to give me 32 in this term. And this is minus 20 plus c. These two terms right here give me 12. I'm gonna subtract 12 from both sides to get eight equals c. And there I have my final constant value giving me that my original function is this right here, but just an eight. So f of t equals four t to the three halves minus five t plus eight. So a quick recap of this problem. In this case, since I'm given this second derivative, it means I, I need to anti-differentiate twice. But after I anti-differentiate or take the indefinite integral of this original expression right here, what I need to do is replace this c with the actual constant value. I need this initial condition information to do that. Here I found it was negative five, so I found my first derivative. Now to find my original function, I do exactly the same thing. Again, replacing this with my initial in condition information to find my c value, which gives me my original function.